Now, the photographer Terry O'Neill has captured the lives of the rich and famous through his lens over the past six decades. His subjects read like a who's who of the 20th and 21st centuries, from Winston Churchill to Frank Sinatra, Brigitte Bardot to Amy Winehouse. Some of them he photographed before they were famous, taking pictures of the Beatles and the Rolling Stones when they were still struggling. Not even the world's most famous spy could elude him. He's captured every James Bond from Sean Connery to Daniel Craig, a collection of images which he's just published in a new book to coincide with the release of the film Spectre. Terry O'Neill, it's a pleasure to have you on Hi. the programme. My pleasure. Let's start with those Bond pictures. You've seen all of those Bonds right. through the years. We've just had the film's release, right. which has been a worldwide event. What is it, do you think, from having seen them all up close that's the enduring appeal of Do Bond? you know, I don't know. I mean, Barbara Broccoli and Michael Wilson, who are the producers, they, well, after Cubby died, I mean, they've just done a fantastic job. They kept the excitement of it. I mean, I, when I f did the first one, which was Sean Connery, I think it was on From Russia with Love. I, you know, I, you just thought there were going to be a couple of films and, and it will all be over, but it's gone on for years. Hasn't it just? And you've brought out this book with all of those fabulous images, yeah. behind the scenes, a lot of them. And it's an interesting book because it's not just a hard copy, but it's a digital book yes. within the yeah, hard copy. I know copy. it is. It's a great idea, isn't it? Fabulous images. Yeah. Let's take a look at some of them. This one, I love. Oh, Can listen, I moon? was down the studio and I saw them on another set shooting this moon sequence from the same film. So I said to Sean, who's always up for a laugh and anything to do with golf, he loves to do. I said, let's get your golf clubs and we go and drive off on the moon and we use the astronaut as the caddy. And of course, he loved that. So this was just was shortly after the, uh, the guy had just landed on the moon. So this was a sort of a front page picture. And, and tell me, was he a, an easy person to photograph? Was he always oh, up for great. playing around? Yeah, he was. He, he, he always went mucking around. Oh, this is a shot. He loved taking pictures as well. Did he? So I took that. that that's, uh, I mean, these are, they're all for sale, you know. So, you know, th th this is a really good seller. People love the mystery behind this picture. I don't know why. Well, because you can't quite tell who it is. You no. think, is it, isn't it? <laughs> what about Piers Brosnan moving he forward was great. in time? He was great. Roger was great. I mean, they were all great. Daniel Craig, George Lazenby even. I mean, he was a character, but I mean, he only lasted one movie. But So who's they... your personal favourite then? Well, I've always liked Sean. Sean, to me, you know, that's who started it all. But Daniel Craig's brought a different element to it, you know. So I really like them all, really. I mean, you can't... You wouldn't think so many variations of Bond could exist, but they all work. What stories you have to tell, and what's so incredible to me, is that you didn't actually set out to be a photographer. No, no, it's all by accident. I was a jazz drummer, and I wanted to go to America, so I, I found out British Airways were just flying to um, New York, so I thought, I'll get a job. You know, you flew 14 hours, you had three days off in, in New York, and flew back, had three days off in London. So I saw this as the great future of a trans world jazz drummer. So I joined British Airways and, you know, they gave me, they said if I took a job, I could be, I, they'd, I'd stand a better chance of getting taken as an air steward. So I took this job in the photographic unit. They gave me homework at the weekends. I went down the airport and photographed people saying goodbye and crying and all, you know, all this stuff, sort of reportage stuff. And I accidentally took a picture of a, a man who had fallen asleep in the midst of African chieftains. And it made a really eye-catching picture. You know, he had a pinstripe suit on, he'd fallen asleep. A reporter saw me and said, can I have this film? Because do you know who that is? And I said, no. He said, that's Rad Butler, the English foreign secretary. Right. I said, oh. So I sent it up and the picture editor loved the, all the pictures on my roll of film. And he gave me a job every Saturday covering the airport for the Sunday Dispatch. Incredible, so it really was just luck, and yeah, yet... Yeah, after three months, I, I, so I got offered a job on the Daily Sketch. Amazing. Which was a young people's paper, it doesn't exist anymore. And that was when you started photographing the Beatles and the Stones before they were right. famous. And were you yeah. mates with all those guys? Oh, well, no, we became good friends, because yeah. I was a couple of years older then, and we all used to go to this club called the Adlib Club. 
And we were all convinced that this chance that had been given to us all young people was going to be over in two years. Uh. And we used to talk about what job were we going to get, you know, when we sort of more growing up. <laughs> and I mean, Ringo wanted to buy a chain of hairdressers for his wife to run and all, all sorts of different things like that. But we never, Keith Richard never thought, I mean, nobody ever thought it was going to last. That is brilliant. And how did it happen then that you became, from a guy who thought this wasn't going to last, the person who everyone in Hollywood wanted to be photographed. I don't know. I, I left to sketch after a couple of years because I wasn't happy with the way papers treated people. And when I left, the guy said to me, the day you walk out of this office, you're finished. You, the, this paper's made you and without us, you're finished. And I just hit the phones and rang up everybody. And suddenly I had a chance to go to America and I met you know, all the uh, well, people Frank like Sinatra, Fred Astaire. Yeah, Frank one of them, Sinatra. this photograph we can see in the background, that is that, iconic, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. That, that was the very first, I mean, Ava Gardner, who I became friendly with, because I started working a lot around films after that. And I became friendly with her, and I said, I've got a chance to photograph your, your ex in a movie, uh, uh, um, you know, to, in a movie he's making yeah. in, in Florida. Uh -huh. And she said, oh, I'll write you a letter. She write a letter. And I'm waiting for him to come on the set. And this was the very first time I'd ever seen him. And I thought, my God, what have I got involved with here? Gosh. I mean, the heavies, anyway, yeah. Like, don't so they, he, yeah. Come, he, he comes up and I hand him the letter. And he reads it and he says, the guy's right, he's with me. And I was for the next three weeks. And I learned more in that three weeks about how to act with a major star he let me go everywhere with him. He was great to me. And his body doubles in that picture together with his mind. Yeah. What about that wonderful one of Brigitte Bardot? That's one that everyone oh, that knows was, of yours as well. That was the it? last frame of film, uh, last film on a frame of 36. Right. And I thought, shall I press the button? And the wind blew and I hit it and it turned out to be a winner. Gosh, it's and of course shot. it was film in those days. Yeah. How different it is to today, isn't it? Because everyone's taking photographs these days. Yeah, they are. Putting them on Instagram. Yeah, selfies. In indeed. <laughs> Do you think the art of the photographer is dying? Would you have done this no, job it, now? No, it actually should encourage people to be more, but I just don't know. It's not the same world anymore, you know? I mean, I don't enjoy t taking pictures anymore today. There's nobody, first of all, there's nobody I want to photograph. I think everyone's making comic book movies and they're not making great movies and there's not the great actors. And, you know, I've shot Paul Newman, Clint Eastwood, uh, you know, you Robert Mitchum, yeah, it. John yeah. Wayne, everyone. I've felt, but they were all different men and today they just haven't got it, I don't think. And what about Elton John? Because those oh, were just great. that concert. Yeah, what, tell, me, tell me the story behind that. Oh, God, he, he let me go on the stage, you know. It was, it was, that was the height of his thing. And I got up next to Ray Cooper, who's the percussion drummer. And he let me up there. And he, in fact, after about an hour, he said, oh, in case you're wondering who the photographer is, it's Terry O'Neill. He gets in everywhere. Yeah. I mean, it was so much fun. That I've had a great life, I tell you. I mean, I can't complain about anything. In fact, we're giving one of those James Bond books to um, him for his AIDS thing at the next year's Oscars. The AIDS Foundation. Yeah, the yeah. 007 edition. Well, it's a, it's a num the number 007 because right. there's a limited edition of a thousand copies. See. Well, it's a wonderful gesture. And very briefly, you're still actually shooting on film, aren't you? Unlike yes. most photographers yeah, yeah. instead of the digital stuff. And why do I you know. do that? Because I, I just prefer it. It takes longer and everything, but it's better. Well, it's worth it. it. Film will come back. You wait and see. Okay, we will see. Terry O'Neill for now. Thanks so Thank much you. for joining us. Thank you.